I am thankful that God is good. Amen. 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 Hey, uh, I was gonna, before I start, I want to tell you something that happened um, last week. I was in my office, and uh, one of the managers from the store, her name's Brenna, she walks in, and me and Stetson are talking. He's supervisor of the warehouse. And she comes up and says, hey, I don't, I don't like the ladies leaving. I'm going out here by herself. You know, this could happen, that could happen. I said, I said what do you mean? Yeah, problem. What, what are you talking about? What do you mean there's people out there? And she says, no, no. I mean, there's, there's, there's hooligans out there right now. And I looked at her and I said, you're not out there? And I was just trying to be funny, but anyway. Uh, so we're sitting there, and she just kept on, on, on. I says, are they out there right now? She said, yeah, but well, no, they're not really on the problem. They could be on there. And she's going back. Well, I didn't understand what she was saying. So I just got to walk toward the door. Stephanie's right there with me. Uh, the other folks are with me. I open the door. And when I open the door, I, I look out the door, and I go, get out of the property! <laughs> like that. Just, and and Stephanie falls on the ground and starts laughing. And Brenda said, I didn't mean for you to do that. But there was nobody there. I said, well, what are we throwing away? Demons? What are we, I don't see anything. She goes, well, they were here. And like that. And it, the thing is, is that sometimes I like to react in a way that seems contrary to what you should act. And it kind of wakes people up. But uh, we, we, I, I agree with walking people to the car when it's dark outside. But uh, if we walk people out in the day and it, it and you open the door and the car is right there, you know, uh, and, and there's a thousand people around. It's like if we did that, nobody would even work and we'd be standing away for somebody to get in the car. You know what I'm talking about? But now I'm all for walking people in secure areas and different things like that. But uh, sometimes, Miss Brenna, because I know she's going to watch this, you need to chill out. <laughs> Amen. Hey, I've actually got some scripture that I want to read because I want you to catch something in, the, in this, what I'm about to read. And it blessed me so. I think we're going to have a good time today. Amen. I really do. Amen. And I want you, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Ephesians chapter 3. And we're going to actually read several verses because I want you to see it. And if you have a different translation, it's okay. You'll still get the gist of it. And I'll make sure you hear it well. And I think you'll get this. Because it's blessed me so much. Amen. Amen. So, in Ephesians chapter 3, we're actually going to start with verse 1. And uh, if you're there, you can say amen. amen. Praise God. He knows it says, For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ, Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. Who is he talking to? Us. That's right. And he says, For the sake of you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the administration of God's grace, which was given to me for you, that by revelation there was made known to me the mystery. I like when I say mystery. That means it's hidden from us from a lot of people, but not to you. It's open to you, praise God. As I wrote before briefly, by referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. This is really if it get good. Which in other generations, here you go, listen to this, was not made known to mankind. Mm -hmm. As it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the spirit, verse 6, to be specific that the Gentiles, are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Look at this. Of which I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me according to the work of his power to me, the very least of all saints. Now he's calling himself the least, which I always consider him the best, but that's just his heart. This grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches. Now, I'm, I'm just, I know we're live, but it's okay. Did anybody that's reading, does y'all say unfathomable? unfathomable? Does y'all say that, or what, does it say something different? Unsearchable. Unsearchable? What else? Anything else? In other words, the riches that, I like the unsearchable too. In other words, it's so big 
Here's not a definition for the riches. It's so powerful. And to enlighten all people as to what the plan of the mystery is, which for ages has been hidden in God. Where is it hidden? In God. In God. In God. So he's telling you right where you can find it. Anytime you're looking for it, it's right there. Praise God. You just got to find it in God. And you ain't got to go looking all over the place. It's right there in God. Multifaceted of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in heavenly places. I don't read a lot, but I want to keep going. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Christ our Lord and whom we have boldness and confident access to faith in him. He's telling you what you got and how to do it and that it's an assurance you got it. Therefore, I ask you not to become... I'm sorry, verse 13. Therefore, I ask you not to become discouraged about my tribulations. He's talking about himself, of course. In your behalf, since, they're, since they are your glory. For this reason, I bend my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives his name. Look at verse 16. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with the power of through his spirit in inner self. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you may be being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints that is the width, the length, the height, the depth. Verse 19. And to know the love of Christ. Everybody say know the love of Christ. Know the love of Christ. Which surpasses knowledge. Now this, this is where... The real smart people can't understand this part. It surpasses what they think they know. That you may be filled to all fullness. Mm. Who wants all fullness? Yeah. Of God. Coming to a close here. I'm not uh, to finish with this. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. us. Yes. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So here's here's what I, I want to go from here, and I want you to hear something. I want to start off with the first miracle. Of course, that was in John. We're not going to read it, but in John chapter 2, 1 through 11, that's the one about the turning water to wine, right? But I want to show you a different angle and, 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 and something I find interesting. Here it is. He's at a wedding. He's just there at a wedding. And they run out of wine. All right? Now, I want you to hear this because they run out of wine and Mary comes up and says, they're out of wine. And here's Jesus. What do I have to do with this? What's that got to do with me? You know? And his statement is, and I want you to hear this, my hour has not yet come. All right? Now, I would have took it as no. Right? No. But here's Mary. Do whatever he says. Do whatever he says. But Jesus ain't said yes. Matter of fact, he never said, you, you'll never see it in any translation. He said yes. Here's what he does. She says, do whatever he says. He says, fill the pots with water. He is making them to rely on their faith to pull out what he's got to give them. But here's the part you got to get. It wasn't his time. Mary's faith moved Jesus. Yes. Amen. And this is the part I want you to understand. For 30 years, she's been waiting for this to come. She couldn't wait no longer. And he, okay, she even says, look, hey, can you do this? It's not my time yet. Her faith pulled it out. But now, now I want you to look at it from Mary's perspective. Number one, she, Jesus was born of a virgin. Yep. You really think people really believe that? Mm -hmm. she, she, she was doing this and that. 
Even Joseph, the husband, probably had some questions along the way. You've got to understand this. Okay? Even herself probably wondered, was that really a vision? Is this real true? You know, and, and she's watching this young man grow up that's the son of God. Okay? In your house. So here, here she is going through all that, but she she called on, she, she drew on the anointing. She's tethered to God's goodness. And she says, I need, I need you to do this. And she said, well, and, and he didn't even answer the way that she thought he would, but she still, this was cool, she still said, do whatever he said, puts the ball in his court. Yep. He could have said anything. He said, okay, go fill the water pot. Draw out the you know, draw out a cup and take it to the head of the governor, the head of the field. And it was the best wine. And we've talked about this too. This we know that it takes twenty years to make some really good wine. Yeah. Remember, but I call it the accelerated blessing. Something that was twenty years from now made it instantly. Mm -hmm. If you need something to happen, you don't have to wait forever. You can have it right now. Amen. You can call it in right now. I'm believing, man, I, I don't know how I'm going to pay this water bill. Uh, you know, I need, I need help with this or I need a situation. That's where the blessing comes now. That's what I call His goodness. And we've got to get that acceleration and understanding to believe it now. Amen. Because so many times <laughs> we feel we're left wanting. I know what it's like to feel like you're wanting. But Jesus doesn't want you feeling wanting. He right. wants you fulfilled and overflow. Amen. That's the God we serve. Yes. That's who He is. Amen. And He always saves the best for last. And if you can imagine, this was Mary's faith that drew. Now, this is His mom. I don't know how you have a relationship with your mother. Sometimes, you know your mom so well, she ain't going to move you if you, I mean, if you don't want to be moved. With, with, you know, you might do it, but you really don't mean it. But watch this. She moved him with her faith and God. What did she have to benefit from that wine? She, the benefit she wanted, she wanted to see it start rolling, the miracles. Amen? Amen. Now, this ain't in the book, and you say, you shouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it. I have a feeling that he was probably doing other things before this recorded miracle. And maybe Mary got to see one. But maybe not. But here's the deal. you got to remember, he's the son of God. Amen. But there was a time, and he knew that when the time was to come. Because at 30, and then there's three years of ministry. He did more in three years than most ministries do in their lifetime. Well, he did do more. But so, anyway... Do you know it's actually God's will, excuse the word, but I have to say it this way, it's actually God's will for you to reign in this life. That's right. That's right. To rule and reign. Oh, I don't believe that. That's why you're not. Right. Right. You are called to reign in this life. Amen. Amen. I remember preaching a sermon, uh, tethered to his favor. You're tethered to his favor. Yes. That means you're tied together with Amen. it. But we need to start utilizing it and believing it, praise God. Amen. If you believe you're going to be blessed and walk in His favor, then it's going to happen. But if you don't, it won't. Start speaking what you want to see until you see the result of what you need. Amen. 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 I'm going to call this today's scripture because this is the basis of everything we're going to do for the next few minutes. Romans 5.17 For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance, everybody say abundance, abundance. of grace, and of the gift, everybody say gift, yes. of righteousness, which means you can't earn it, it's a gift. Yes. Just open it. Give the righteous will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. He's telling you how to reign. And it's your blessing financially, everything you ever desire is through him. If you'll get that in here, you'll have it. Praise God. You are destined to reign in life. But we let circumstances run us rather than look into the one that changes our circumstances, you know, by his favor. Praise God. But 
not the Lord's desire that you live a life of defeat, poverty, and failure. I promise you. We are called to be the head and not the tail. Not the tail. I'll say it again. We are called to be the head. Not not the tail. That's right. You're above and not beneath. That's right. So that's who you, you're supposed to be. If you're a business person or a business owner, God wants you to have a thriving business. Amen? Amen. If you're a homemaker, He wants you to bring uh, have you bring up fantastic children. But watch, emulate to the children what you want God to do to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. And God, He blessed me because I know I didn't raise the kids the best way. I mean, I, mean, I did okay. But He helped me to help them. <laughs> because I didn't know the things I know now. Amen. But He still helped me in spite of me. All he's asking for is just a little stepping out on your part, and he'll feel the rest. Yes. Because it's all about him. Isn't that right? Yes. I mean, if, okay, if you're a student, he, he wants you to pass your exam, but not just make it. He wants you to be the best. Right. He wants you to receive the best. But so many times we sit there and think, well, if I could just barely get there. No. See, if you're believing God for a new career, a new career, God doesn't want you to have one that barely helps you make it. His desire is for you to thrive Amen. and have an influence to be a blessing to others. That's yeah. right. Isn't that right? Yes. Listen, when you reign in life, you reign, you reign over sin. Did you know that? You reign over sin. That means it can't own you. It can't hold. I'm telling you, you have authority that you have no idea or clue you have sometimes. Yes. And we've got to catch that on the inside of us. You reign over the powers of darkness. You reign over the depression. You, you ain't and over perpetual lack, and over every curse, every sickness, and disease, you reign over the devil and his devices, according to the word of God. Yes. But that's in you. You just need to find somebody to agree with you. That's right. And if you can't find anybody, you got the Lord agreeing with you. Amen. You speak it, he's there with you. Amen? Yes. Amen. And so, so how do we reign in life? The power to reign doesn't depend on your family background, where you come from, your educational qualifications, how you look, uh, how much scripture you know, uh, how much you have in the bank. So if we remember that today's scripture is through the one Jesus Christ, remember Mary, she put a demand on the anointing when it wasn't his time. The very one bringing the miracle said, no, it wasn't his time. She pulled on it anyway. And it happens. You have that same Ability because hey, he's no respecter of persons. That's right. If he did it for Mary, he'll do it for Philip. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. He'll do it for you, John. Praise God. Amen. The power to reign is based entirely on him and him alone. So we have got to understand it through the one Jesus Christ. Now, if you're living a life of defeat, defeated by sin, by constant guilt, condemnation, if you, by sickness or anxiety, and you're worrying. You're not thinking about the right stuff. If you're attacked financially and lack, broken relationships, unforgiveness, if you're not living the life God intended for you, it's sometimes we gotta be, you gotta catch something. Yeah. There's one thing to teach, one thing. And uh, I was telling you guys this is an illustration, and I got the guy here to prove it. Um, it's interesting because you're in some places, he was my boss actual boss, and then I was over him and teaching him at some places. But there's one place we worked, which is interesting. We worked for Time Warner Cable, and it was uh, CRI, and we climbed telephone poles to make a living. He said, I, I, Gary, give me a job there. I, I don't think you can do it. You remember me saying that? He said, I can do it. I said, okay. I got him a job because it's really good money. And uh, you can climb... The way I was taught, at the top of that telephone pole is your money. Go get, go cut that those people cable off, or go restart it, or go to the door and get collections, yeah. or get their boxes, or whatever it is. Yeah. But trying to get them to pay, you get more money. Right. So I got him a job, and I took him out. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I took him out to training, but I don't know if this is the right way or not. But I see we had thirty-two foot ladders, the fiber glass. I could jerk that thing up, throw it up. It's no big deal, and I sling it out, and it has hooks at the top, and you throw it on top of the wire, not the pole. 
So what you sitting going like this, right? I said, go ahead, Daddy, get up there. Now, I remember me doing the same thing. But I was climbing that, you know, you, you, you climb that thing, and at first you're trying to get used to it, and you want to have a good lean. You don't want it straight up and down. So he's going up, and it took him a little bit to get up there, and he got about halfway up. I said, Daddy, go on, get up there. He said, dude, don't you get on this ladder, because there is a weight limit. And I, I was about 50 pounds lighter back then, but I said, no, what? That's it. I ran up the ladder. No, 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 no. He's up at the top. I guess I get up right behind him. I put my arms around him. And then what do I do, Daniel? Go ahead. I shook that thing and that pole and that thing go like this, and he's going, ah! <laughs> he's I said, boy, you're going to be all right. And I just slide back down, stick my feet on there, and I just go back down. And after that, he started going faster and faster and faster. And he, eventually, there's even times you go up that thing, you didn't get your hands hard, you touch the rungs. But you get used to it because you know it works. That's right. That's the way you got to get with this. Amen. You step out the first time, you'll get so greedy for it, you get used to his goodness that you got to have it all the time. Right. Yes. And so, there's something about drawing and knowing his goodness. The first thing you got to do is you got to realize who you are in Christ. Amen? That's right. Romans 5 21 tells you. So that a sin, as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through the righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I want to put with that John 10 10. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. You have life. Abundant life, not death. Why am I having all these issues? Are you applying the word? Your weapon's right here. Are you applying the word to your situation? You start speaking over the day and what you want to happen with your job, with your family, with your finances, with your health. You begin to attack it with your mouth. I know that attacking still happens, but we've got to stand on the word until you see the result you want. Amen. Is that correct? Yes. yes. That's why Philippians 4.19, this is the New Living Translation. And this same God, I like the way it says this, and this same God who takes care of me, talking about Paul, will supply all your needs according to his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. You have those. He's given them to you. They're yours. Second thing, your power lies in you, this is going to be tough, ignoring, everybody say ignoring. Ignoring. The opposition. Learn to ignore certain people. So I'll start with that. Amen. <laughs> I'm not saying be disrespectful, but you don't have to believe it. Some people don't know what you know in the Word. That's right. And then if somebody look. Okay, 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 Adrian, if he's standing right here and a guy walks in and says, you know what? My my family died at 50 and I'll probably die at 50, so I guess you'll die at 50. It's worse for me. Uh-huh. Right. I don't even know what you're talking about. Sure. I don't even know you. Get behind me. I ain't trying to be ugly, but the thing is, what they're, the statement they're putting on you is ugly. That's right. Yeah. So don't receive what you don't, you know it doesn't line up. Ever, amen? And so, don't waste energy on people who always seem to oppose you. Right. But some people just keep seeming to go around. People are, that's not affirmation, that's destruction. Yeah. And you'll find out you'll be a lot happier not going around them. Not everyone will celebrate you. Walk away from uh, opposition, isn't that right? Yeah. You walk away and you're going to see things begin to change. And that's what blesses us. Now, think on things that are pure. The Bible doesn't say think on things that offend you. Right? Think on things that are pure. Amen. In other words, it's something that's going to bless you. It's like pouring water over you. It's not pouring oil you can't breathe. You know, you, you got to get that. But we do it anyway. I understand that. When you think on things that are good in tough circumstances, you're literally acting like on be still and know that I'm God. Amen. Be still and know that I'm God. Amen? Amen. Hey, I go through patches where I don't, I'm not the most positive person in the world. And she reminds me of it. <laughs> she does it too, though. Uh -huh. 
always shocked me. There are parents that okay, I'm not saying one way or the other, please, but I got I gotta over be dramatic so you get the deal. There are people that hover over their children and protect them so much. I mean, there's nothing ever gonna happen wrong. Nothing ever, ever, ever. Oh, they follow them, right? And something happened. Okay. Then there's parents that oh, is my kids here? I think they're in this they're somewhere around here. I don't know. Like this, and nothing ever happens to them kids. Okay, but here's the deal. I, I, I'm, I was a hoverer with the two boys. I didn't care about the girl, but uh, <laughs> that's not true. No, but I, I was a hoverer, and, and, and I just don't. Well, I knew what kind of person I was. I didn't trust nobody. You know what I mean? You, you say. But here's the thing. I noticed that all four of my children were protected if I was there or not. That's right. And the thing is, if you believe it and speak, it's even better. That's right. The thing is, hovering over them means you don't trust. Yeah. And I, now I'm, I'm, I'm all for protecting, you know, especially when you're at a fair or, a fair or, or any kind of thing like this, you know. This is kind of funny. I, I, I'm not, I just thought it was hilarious. Um, what's, your boy, what's your kid boy's name? The older one. William. William. Uh, so I'm, I'm playing this. Uh, it was a birthday party yesterday. And I'm sitting down playing this game called Galaga. What's it called? <laughs> Galaga. I'm playing I'm pretty good. And he comes up to me and goes, I'm better than you, Daddy. <laughs> I said, boy, you better watch out. I said, watch it. I said, I put him up there. I put him down. And I said, go. I was, he started killing them all. I'm like, I don't want to be around. <laughs> and he is better than I am. Yeah, he was like tearing it up. I'm like, golly. You know, this kid did this say whatever and then there's ones that really so he but he believes it but everything is, I don't know if he's played before but he, he knew right where to move them and when the, the, the bombs come down he'd go like this and he's just doing that I was like wow you know and but this is oh here's why I told you the story I'm doing this and I move a certain way he goes not that way Pastor Gary and the <laughs> 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 but what he knew what works and didn't work. And he's how? Seven. Seven. Okay. What you mean to this, Steve? He's probably just tall, but anyway. Um, he knew it because he's seen it work. I've seen this work. I know it works. I know the healing power of God is real. I know that people get set free. I know that anything that you're going through is temporary. And you will come out of it. That's right. The best advice I can give anybody that's going through marriage issues is just turn around and say, babe, let's talk about this. Not in defense. Oh, but I know what you said. I know it. No, no, no. Let's talk about this. And that's what I, we've always done. So a lot of times we've had disagreements, but when we talk it out and we pray over it, God moves in it. Amen. Just, the enemy wants marriage is destroyed. That's right. Isn't that right? Yes. Start calling out his favor, praise God. It's hard to reign over anything if fear is dominating your life and your home. And so if, if that's happening, you need to realize and finish what... When Jesus spoke the word, he went and sat down. Because there ain't nothing else to add. This is going to happen. you got to start sitting down on some things. That's right. Yeah. you got to start believing God, praise God. Amen. See, in John 19, 30, Jesus said it is finished. Isn't that right? <laughs> See, you know what, I'm going to read this. I, I, it'll be okay. I, it won't take. I want to read Luke 4, 16 through 19 out loud because I want you to get what I got. So Jesus name came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and his custom was he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. He was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah 
And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to recover uh, of the sight of the blind, watch this, to set at liberty those who are uh, oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, this is out of Isaiah 61. Now watch, verse 1 is what I just read the end of. And when Jesus stopped reading, the very next verse is, and the day of vengeance of our God. He did not read that. The reason he stopped, he didn't, he didn't read it, is because he was declaring that favor and grace is here now. Amen. Not destruction, not vengeance. He's declaring, if you look at Isaiah 1, you'll see that. And right when you jump into 2, he, he re, the last thing he read was, you're proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord, and the very next thing, of course, is about the vengeance of God. But he didn't read that. You know why? Because this is the promise. He's the promise. All the shadows and things that was talked about in the Old Testament was here. The time was now. And he's stepping into what God's doing. And he, bless, he wanted to bless each and every person, praise God. And knowing that, that's when things change. The New Living Translation says, And that the time of the Lord's favor has come, this is what is meant by being able to rightly divide the Word of God. See, you've got to understand, I'm going to use that old statement I've used before, I am tethered to His favor. You are tethered to His favor. You've got to get that... They may have said, well, this is going to happen. You know what? If you're telling to this favor, that can change. And I'm telling you, if you know who he is, you'll see God move. Romans 8 says we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen. Last time I checked, joint heir means you got what he's got. Amen. And what a powerful being that would look at you and say, you're going to do greater things than I am. But I'm going to add one thing for those that believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you don't believe, you won't. That's right. Being... Being added or tethered to grace means I'm never without hope because He's always with me. Amen. Remember after Jesus read Isaiah, He even said this, and you can look at this, the scripture that has just been read is fulfilled. So grace is here. Amen. It's been here. Yes. And His grace is in you. Amen. I need grace. Amen. I had enough of the law. I've had enough of finger pointing. I've had enough of do's and don'ts. And that's why he didn't preach that. What he preached was Jesus and him crucified, taught Paul. He, he talked about the very one that can set you free. We can go around and have sermons all day about all the do's and don'ts, the Ten Commandments, and this and that. that ain't going to help you a bit. When we start talking about the one that sets us free, that's when breakthrough is going to begin to happen in people's lives. See, Jesus did not give you the spirit of fear. fear. But power, love, and sound mind. Is that correct? Yes. Joseph Prince said, The law is about you looking at yourself, and the new covenant is about you seeing Jesus. Mm. Amen. You That's are good. set free. Amen. You are brand new. Yes. You are meant. You are meant to rule and reign Amen. in this life. That's right. You know, uh, a lot of times when... <laughs> Grace preachers are beginning, or, or even people of, of prosperity or whatever, they preach about ruling and reigning. They go home and look at their wife, I'm meant to reign, and she knocks them down. So the thing is, is that <laughs> that's not the rule and reign we're talking about. Right. The ruling and reigning is over every opposition that comes against you and yours. Amen. That's right. Because you guys are tethered to the husband and wife. Yes. And you are going the same direction. Now watch, if one's going to fail... And they're tethered. What's going to happen to the other one? Mm -hmm. So, but watch this. If you're tethered to that, say, no, no, let's don't go that way. Let's don't do that. Amen? Let's believe God. Amen. Let's start trusting the Lord. Amen? That's let's right. believe God that He can change things and He will praise God. Amen. You know, I don't want to hear stuff about rules and regulations. I'm not a rebel with that. I'm, well, maybe I am. But I'm a rebel for Jesus. Amen. I want to see. That's what separates all the religions that argue over 
how you're supposed to baptize, how you're supposed to, that the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or no, there's one, there's three. There's, I don't get none of those debates. But let me tell you the one thing that I will not wane from. I don't care. I'm sorry. This is it. it. Here it is. This is what separates me. He, Jesus, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes on, comes on to the Father except by him. I believe that's an absolute. You can't change that. There is no other way to heaven. Oh, but there is. No. no. I'm telling you right now, Jesus is our only road to heaven. And people's going to argue, well, what about God? I'm telling you that right now, that's where people start becoming inclusionists. And they start saying, you know, everybody's going to heaven. And I understand the heart. That's not true. That's not true. That means, every, I mean, well, I don't even going to waste my time with that. But the deal is, if a person accepts Jesus Christ, their life is different. Amen. That's right. And it's the truth, and you'll see a change. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this day. Yes. Amen. I thank you that we are victors, not victims. Yes. That we are victorious through Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord. I thank you that my breakthrough relies on Jesus Christ. Amen. And he says we have it. He paid for it. It's done. Yes. And if I don't like the way my life is going, I need to concentrate on him so much and realize it's through him. And, and just invest my thought into him. And he's going to give me everything I desire. Amen. I thank you for your goodness, Lord. Yes. I thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. I thank you for healed marriages and lives changed. Yes. I thank you as we breathe, we breathe life. Amen. I praise you, God, for your goodness. Yes. I praise you, God, for your goodness. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that here at Turning Point of Grace, I thank you that we are so blessed that people can see we're blessed. Amen. Because of who you are. Yes. Not who we are, but who you are. Amen. I thank you for your goodness, Lord. I yes. thank you for your blessing. I thank you for the power of God. Thank you. I thank you for resting with us. I thank you for loving us. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Everybody say, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I thank you for your goodness. I thank, thank you for your goodness. your goodness. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name, name of Jesus. Jesus. All God's people say it. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a beautiful, lovely, wonderful day. And see y'all Wednesday for the Hour of Power.